All right, hi, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anthony Diorio. I'm uh, executive chef, co-owner of uh, Restaurant Vesta Montreal. Uh, I'm partnered today with uh, Hudson Bay Canada and Rebel Canada to uh, show you guys some great pantry cooking ideas and recipes. Uh, not only I'm a chef, but I'm also a father and a, a husband to a, a wife that's an amazing nurse. And we all know that our nurses are working extremely hard lately. So, you know, we try to, we try to keep it fresh and uh, I, try to, I try to come up with some cool ideas so that I can put some good meals on the table for my family. Uh, like all you, we try to balance everything. It's not always easy. So today, I'd like to maybe you know lighten things up for you guys and uh, and show you guys a couple cool recipes that you can do at home for your parent, for your family, your parents, your kids, whoever you want. Uh, since we don't have a lot of time, uh, I will be only uh, focusing on the most tricky parts of my recipes. Uh, in the chat, we do have our HBC and Breville team. Uh, they'll send you, they'll show you a link where you guys can sign up to get emails to get all of our recipes uh, that are a lot more in detail. They're also there uh, to help you guys with any questions you have uh, about our products, about what recipes I'm doing. And also at the end of this, at the end of the show, I'll be, uh, I'll be doing a 10 to 15 minute question period. So ask your questions in the chat. Our team are going to accumulate five to six questions and I'll be able to answer them at the end. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to start with a no-knead bread. Uh, so what's a no-knead bread? A no-knead bread is something that you don't need a machine for. You don't got to do folds. Uh, it's straightforward and extremely simple. So what we start with is flour. We'll put our flour in the bowl. You guys, you'll see how easy this recipe is. Add your salt, add your yeast, and We'll mix it together. Bread is, has really become a rage in the, the last couple months, ever since everyone's been in confinement. And it's, it's awesome to see so many people trying different recipes, trying to make their own bread at home. So now we stir in all our ingredients. We're gonna add our water. It doesn't matter how quickly you add the water. Uh, you can add it all in one shot. You can add it a bit at a time. I add it all in one shot and just stir till it all comes together. You're going to see that this dough really, it, it, it's a very clumpy dough once you go bring it to, to fermentation. This dough we're going to ferment for 12 to 16 hours on the counter. Or if you're as lucky as I am that I got a, a Breville Smart Oven Air, which has a proofing option, option on it, uh, you can do that in four to five hours. So we're going to mix this all together. Once it more or less comes together, I don't know how well you can see that. It's still very, very sandy, very clumpy. It's totally normal. I like to just add a touch of water on top just to keep a bit of moisture on the top. And we're done. We've mixed our dough. So now what you would do is, I'm just going to rinse my hands. What you would do is give it a cover with, uh, with a, either aluminum or saran wrap. I always suggest saran wrap better, not a rag because it will dry out. You want to keep the humidity inside. And if you have one of these Breville proofers, I'll uh, show you a little cam view from there. Uh, put it in on your proofing option, four to five hours, and this is what, what comes out of it. So it doubles in size, doubles to two and a half times. And now we'll be ready to shape it. Even the shaping, you don't have to worry about being an artisanal baker. Uh, you just got to get it round. That, that's all I suggest. At this point, while I would be shaping, I would turn on my oven to, uh, to 450 degrees. Uh, take a creuset pot or uh, a cocotte, as we call it. Uh, put it inside, let it, once the oven gets to 450, you leave it in there for 30 minutes to preheat. So we're going to flour our board. So what I do is I fold once, I fold twice, just so that it comes off the sides a bit. And then I dump it all onto the table. Okay. 
flour it all up and then just shape it into a ball no no crazy techniques no uh hold on a second there we go just into a ball like that you take a parchment paper cut it into a round put it on your parchment paper and back in the bowl that you fermented it in now i would put either a damp rag or just a dry rag over it i usually leave it over the oven for the 30 minutes while we're waiting for our um our our oven to preheat properly and our cut to pre preheat -pre properly and then once it's done all you got to do is open your door take your cut out be careful it's going to be extremely hot uh, take your parchment paper put it inside cover it put it back in the oven I'm just gonna wash my hands you put it back in the oven cook it with lid on for 30 minutes then after 30 minutes pull it out take the lid off if your bread is not a light golden brown leave it another four or five minutes with the lid on then take your lid off and do it for uh, cook it for another 15 minutes uh, during those 15 minutes this is what you're looking for now i pre-baked one the magic of television or facebook live in this instance I'm gonna clean my area here a lot of people are scared to uh to overcook their bread bread needs to cook you gotta you gotta make your nice dark crust guys i swear i use that oven the baking option this cut cut right here and this is what came out of it nice golden brown crunchy crust this is exactly what you're looking for yes fermentation is 12 to 18 hours if you don't have a proofer but the total work time is 25 to 30 minutes i suggest everyone do something like this at home it's something really cool to eat and if you have if you're blessed like i am having this i will show you the oven having this this oven right here what it does is it's pretty much everything it's uh you can toast you can make bagels you can broil you can bake you can roast you can warm you can cook pizza uh, you can proof as i said it's also an air fryer that's why it's the smart oven air uh, and you can reheat you can cook cookies uh, slow cook and you can dehydrate and i've used it as a dehydrator it is extremely efficient it is really well made so that's our bread segment that was really quick easy and now we're gonna go I'm just gonna move this out of the way we're gonna go on to the next step the pizza so the pizza dough uh it's the ingredients are extremely similar to to the bread dough obviously a pizza dough needs to be kneaded uh it's salt water yeast flour you keep it simple some oil uh that's the only difference from the the bread recipe uh i'm gonna show you guys how to up your game with pizza at home whether your pizza dough recipe is a uh, restaurant quality or just regular pizza dough that that you make at home that you that that doesn't come from a restaurant the key trick that i try to give everyone is a cold long fermentation so i'm talking two to three days in the fridge uh, it for me a pizza dough it, it, it doesn't exist to, to say in the morning i want to eat pizza you make a pizza dough and eat it at night I like to ferment it 48 to 72 hours uh, a slow long fermentation let your yeast slowly eat the natural sugars in your flour uh, so that it's not heavy on your stomach the structure builds beautifully so what i do is i mix my dough i portion it and then we put it in the fridge for minimum 48 hours ideally 72 hours we do that at the restaurant i do that at home 
I, I never make pizza dough for today. I always make it for tomorrow, the day after, the day after that. So let's get to opening a pizza dough. I'm blessed enough that I own a pizzeria. So I have pizza dough always ready. So here we go. We're going to put our dough in the flour. So you want to always keep it round, obviously. So what we're going to start by doing is pushing the air from the center into the crust. You want to build your crust, as we call it. Continue going. Once your dough gets big enough to be able to put your hand on it, what you want to do is this motion. You want to pull and turn, pull and turn. This is probably the hardest part of pizza, opening the dough. Anyone can make dough, anyone can roll dough, but opening a pizza dough properly, that is probably the hardest thing for even me to teach my employees. Uh, a lot of people think we're doing a circular motion, but we're not. What we're doing is we're pulling and turning, pulling and turning. So my strong hand pulls, my weaker hand guides. And you do that over and over and over again with putting minimal, minimal pressure on your dough because the more you push down on your dough, the more your crust is going to envelop on itself. So here we go. We're going to garnish this now. Now for garnishing, uh, we're going to go more Neapolitan style. So it's garnished very, very, very little. Uh, you don't want to put too much garnish on it just because the dough is so thin, it won't be able to hold it. And also you want to try to garnish the exterior of your pizza more than the center of your pizza. Because when your pizza dough rises, it becomes like this, it becomes concave and everything goes to the center. So a bit of tomato sauce, some pecorino, uh, mozzarella, here it is. And a couple pieces of fior di latte, which is just a, a fresh cow's mozzarella. So now you're asking, chef, how are we going to cook this? We are going to use uh, probably one of the best pizza ovens I've ever used. And I, I am not lying. The pizzaiolo, the, the Breville uh, pizzaiolo, sorry. Uh, this oven is something special. It goes from room temperature to 700, 750 degrees in 20 minutes. I have, trust me, ladies and gentlemen, I've tried almost every oven out there. It's the only one that makes the pizza that looks like on the box. Uh, it'll give you your leopard spotting. It actually goes to 750 degrees and it'll cook your pizzas in two to three minutes. A lot of people don't believe me till they see it. And now you'll all see it. So we make sure there's enough flour under our pizza so that it slides off. I always give it just a couple taps. And one second, I'll show you guys the better view. So we come to the oven, we put the paddle to the back and we just slide the pizza straight off. If it doesn't stay perfectly round, it's all right. We call that artisanal. As that cooks, I'm gonna garnish a second pizza. We promised you pantry pizza, so I'm going to make what I call a pantry pizza. So for me, a pantry pizza is just using ingredients that you have in your house, uh, things that are always left over. Uh, you open, you have people over, you open a, a jar of olives, some artichokes. They just stay at the back of the fridge. We can make pizza with this stuff. So we'll start with another dough. We give uh, many, many master classes, which one is, which is my favorite, obviously, as everyone knows, is the Pizzaiolo master class. Uh, in the chat, 
with the email of our recipes, you will be able to get the information on all our master classes. So as I was speaking, two seconds, boom, the pizza is open. So we're going to start with a base of tomato. We're going to go light on the tomato just because we will have a lot of garnishes on this pizza. We're going to continue with some pecorino. And then some mozzarella again. So pretty much we're mounting sort of like a margarita, but we're adding a bunch of ingredients on it. So I looked into my fridge, my pantry. Uh, I said, what did I have? So I did, I had artichokes. We're gonna add a couple artichokes. Some white onion. Some white mushroom. Some Kalamata olives. I know every Italian family, there is a container of Kalamata olives at the back of the fridge. I grew up with that always. Some spicy salami. We're going to take a look at our other pizza so it doesn't burn. Sorry about the view, guys. So I'll go over it again. We open the pizza dough. Tomato sauce, cheese, pecorino, some olives, uh, salami, artichokes. We're going to add I had some leftover tomatoes, so I sliced it. We're going to put that on top. That looks like it's ready to go in the oven. go one comes out and the other goes in oh. that one stuck a bit but it's all right. So here we go. We're ready to cut our pizza. Look at how it comes out of this oven. And from here, you can add whatever other ingredients you would like. We're gonna add a bit of basil and we're gonna finish it off with just a touch of hot honey. Hot honey goes great on pizzas. While we wait for the next one to cook, I'm going to open one last one just because I know myself I'm a perfectionist and I will not like the way it looks. go all right so tomato let's recreate that pantry pizza let's make a picture perfect pecorino mozzarella mushrooms, white onions, and that's the name of the game guys with, uh, with pizza. When you don't succeed, you try and you try again. So there we go, more salami. 
But really guys, pizza, anything goes on pizza. You can use any ingredients that you want from your fridge, uh, whatever, whatever you really like. Really, I know everyone likes pizza a different way. So get creative. We say something at the restaurant where a pizza dough is, is like a blank plate for us, where Michelin star chefs have a white plate. We have a white piece of pizza dough. All right. Add the final touch with tomatoes. Make sure it's floured enough. There we go. So a lot of people, I, I know that qu this question is probably coming up in the chat. A lot of people say, well, chef, we don't have the pizzaiolo. Uh, how can we replicate what you're doing? So the thing with pizza to, to get that, that perfect leopard spotting, you do need a certain amount of heat, but the closest you can get with a home oven, let's say, is you take your oven, put it to the highest that you can. Uh, my oven is 550, some people it's 600, some people it's 500. Put it to the highest temperature that you can and put your stone, your pizza stone obviously, which you would need, uh, at the highest uh, grill inside. The way it works is that your, your heat will rise and hit the top of your pizza because the biggest problem is the bottom of the pizza will cook quicker than the top. I'm lucky enough to have this pizzaiolo oven that goes up to 750 degrees and because it's such a small oven it intensifies the heat and cooks it extremely quickly so for whoever wants to make this uh whoever wants to make pizza at home and, f and finds that they're they're not getting the right uh the, the right product out of the oven that the dough tends to be dry uh, try to raise your your uh, your stone to the top like that the heat hits the top of your pizza and cooks it properly also make sure you preheat your stone for an hour an hour and a half once your oven gets to the hottest so don't put your you can put your stone in from the beginning but once your oven beeps to say that it's at 550 then you start calculating an hour an hour and a half um, so another question that i get very often uh, while we wait for this uh, other pizza to to finish cooking, I'm just going to take out another plate. Uh, is chef, what do you put in your tomato sauce? So, my tomato sauce is uh, like I love telling everyone is the hardest recipe you'll ever see in anything cooking. It's tomato and it's salt. That's all it takes. Uh, I know a lot of people think you put garlic, cheese, uh, oregano, a bunch of spices. If that's what you like, that's what you can do. But that is a misconception with, uh, with American style pizza, let's say, where a marinara is a pizza sauce. Marinara is actually a pizza. So that's what we use for one kind of pizza. And I actually make a really good marinara sauce. But for a pizza sauce, it has to be raw tomato and salt. Uh, do not cook down your tomato. It'll just make it very pasty. There we go. So now the pantry pizza is done. And I'm just going to top it off with some spicy peppers. I like everything spicy, so the spicy peppers are not a must. Coming from an Italian background, we, we grow up on spicy peppers. You can add some basil, uh, you can make this vegetarian, not, not put any meat on it, 
it's it's really it's up to you when it comes to pizza it's up to you guys it's the person eating that that decides the person making it that decides so let's get to this tomato sauce this hard hard recipe i'm just kidding it's probably the easiest recipe you'll ever do so for the tomato sauce i'm going to be using the breville blooser uh, to make my tomato sauce you have two options either i'm only going to be using the blender option but you can either do it in a blender or with a hand blender the only thing i suggest when you're using a blender or a hand blender always blend your tomato on low speed uh, i suggest using a whole tomato or a pasada whether you make it homemade or not we're talking pantry cooking so today i'm going to be using our homemade pasada but whole tomato the same thing just uh, make sure it's a bit pulpy. I, I like my tomato sauce on my uh, on my uh, pizza a bit pulpy so that it, it, it has still a bit of texture to it. So for every, I, I'm doing a double recipe here, but for every can of 540 milliliters, so the, re, the regular tomato cans, whether it be San Marzano, uh, I, I, at the restaurant we use plum tomatoes from California. I believe they're sweeter. Uh, the, it, it's the right amount of pulp to skin, the, the, to, to meat. Uh, so I'm going to put, this is a double batch. So this is one liter, but it would be half a liter. For every one can of 540 milliliters of whole tomato or chunky or whatever you decide to use, you put three grams of salt. So right now I have five, uh, one, one liter of pasada. I have six grams of salt. We're going to turn this guy on and we're going to put him on speed one. That's it. Slowly let it, let it do its thing. Uh, if you're using a hand blender, just, you know, mix it up properly. Make sure it's well blended, but still pulpy. You don't want, you don't want it too liquidy. And also why I say always use the slow speed is that if you want a sweet uh, tomato sauce for, your, uh, for your, your pizza without having to add sugar, you don't want to break the tomato seeds. In the tomato seeds, lets out a lot, a lot of acidity and bitterness. So we want to avoid doing that. And that's it. This is done. I'm actually going to pour it back in to my mason jar. And there you go. We got one liter of pizza sauce. There we go. So now uh, we've reached our last recipe of the night. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. We're going to be making some roasted vegetables. Why roasted vegetables is we always have extra vegetables in the fridge, especially having a, a daughter. She doesn't eat a lot at one time. So there's always stuff left over in the fridge. And what I want to show you guys is how to do a really high quality, quick and easy vegetable dish. Uh, and not to be scared of it. I know a lot of people don't, some people don't like cooking vegetables just because they get too soft. Uh, they're not caramelized enough. So like I said, I am blessed enough to have the Breville pizza yolo oven. It goes up to 700 degrees, 750. You can replicate this on your barbecue. Uh, what I'm going to do is cook five, uh, six different vegetables, but you can't cook them all at the same time. That's one of the biggest mistakes that people make is that they, cook all their vegetables in one shot, overcrowd a pan. So what I'm going to do is I always start with the hardest to the softest. And because I can cook it above 600, so at 700 degrees, 650, 750, I don't need to blanch my vegetables either because what's going to happen is that they're going to caramelize on the outside and be nice and crunchy on the inside. If there's one thing I don't like is really soft, mushy ve vegetables. So the pizza yolo oven comes with a carbon steel 
pan with a detachable handle because this fits perfectly in the oven. So what's going to happen now is we are going to put, we're going to start with our cauliflower. So here I have cauliflower, zucchini, red onion, asparagus, and red tomato, cherry tomatoes actually. So I'm going to start with my cauliflower because it's my hardest vegetable, then go to my zucchini and then add my last three ingredients at the same time because these are the three ingredients I want to cook the least because if I put them in now, they'll probably burn. Get some olive oil. So just a bit of olive oil, some cracked black pepper. Now, if you're going to do more than one vegetable, I would say over season so that when you add your other vegetables, there's enough seasoning for everything else. Some salt. This is really simple, guys. I'm going to just add a bit of salt on these vegetables and a bit of black pepper, just to say. And we're going to go in the oven. I promise I won't forget it on that. So, as you can see, it fits perfectly. We're going to let that cook for, I would say, four or five minutes. And then we'll start, we'll continue adding the rest of our ingredients. Uh, normally, when, when we do this, we, this is one of the things we do in our pizza masterclass to show what this oven is capable of doing. Uh, we just do lemon, salt, and pepper. Today, I prepared for you guys a nice, uh, a nice pesto vinaigrette. And like I said at the beginning, guys, if you want any of the recipes, I know I'm sort of going a bit fast through everything, but we have all these recipes on hand. Just ask our moderators from uh, HBC and Breville Canada in the chat. They'll be able to give you everything that you need. Uh, let's see. So back on the vegetables, uh, what, what, I'm, what I want to do is, you know, it's, it's hard to get creative uh, with, with whatever's left in the house, right? Especially in these harder times, it's a bit harder to go to the grocery store. So it's just to get inspiration on showing that you can take what's left over in the fridge, what's left over in the pantry, and you can make awesome recipes with it. Uh, for instance, the pantry pizza, it's something that is made literally from all the leftovers that were in the fridge and is delicious. I don't know if you can hear, you can hear that it's already starting to caramelize. The high heat on the vegetables, uh, it does not, if you, if you do it properly, it won't burn them. It'll just caramelize all that, that, that intense heat brings out all the sugar from the vegetables and it causes them to, to caramelize. And that's where you get that awesome, awesome flavor. And because of that high heat, you're cooking them enough. You just got to cook them long enough and making sure that they don't burn. Obviously you always got to keep an eye on what you're cooking at home. If you want to do this on the barbecue, get a, a, a heat safe pan. So like a, let's say like a stainless steel pan. Uh, that, that, has a, that does not have any plastic on it, pretty much. And then you go straight, uh, to, uh, go straight on the barbecue, close the lid on it, let it get nice and hot, put your vegetables in there, and you'll be able to recreate what I'm doing in the pizza yolo. So let's see where we're at on these vegetables. So as you can see, they're already starting to caramelize we're gonna add in our zucchini just gonna give it a little bit of a toss be careful when doing that in the house in case it all falls on the floor, I have a lot of experience with, uh, with cooking like this. 
I'm just going to pull up the questions. Beautiful. Uh, there we go. So, like I said, we're going to put a, a pesto vinaigrette on it. This this oven is really something something special. And guys, you don't need something like this to make pizza at home. Please get creative. Uh, there are amazing recipes out there. And also ask our Breville team to give you our Breville pizza dough recipe. Uh, this is exactly what I'm using right now. And it's, it's astonishing what you can do at home and cook it in your home oven. I've actually cooked it in my home oven. It, it's very, very similar to, uh, to what just came out of this oven now. Now we're going to add the rest of our vegetables. I'm going to give you guys a better view. That's it. We're going to let that cook for another minute or two, and then we'll be ready to put it in a plate and serve. Make this at your dinner parties, as a centerpiece, uh, as a side dish to wh whatever you want, a great steak, uh, you know, especially when the, the summer comes, it, we have access to a lot more than, uh, than in the winter. So it's easier to get creative, but then get creative all summer and learn for the winter so that you're able to make great vegetables in the winter too with the winter veg as we call it. There we go. Be careful because that pan is going to be extremely, extremely hot. We're going to take our vinaigrette and garnish it. There you go, guys. An easy veg delicious so quick to make uh, if you're doing it at home in your home oven you can just make sure again 500 degrees vegetables like high heat they bring out flavors that a lot of people don't know they have it's uh it, it's something really special and like look i'm sure a lot of you are saying wow he barely cooked those things the thing is that they are perfectly caramelized and now in the next five minutes by the time you bring it to the table you know usually you'll cover it they just steam steam perfectly through. Uh, now, everyone, I'd like to thank everyone that, that was here for the show. I'd like to thank Hudson Bay Canada, uh, Breville Canada, uh, for, for hosting this. Uh, I had an awesome time. For whoever wants to stay, I'm going to be answering uh, a couple questions. But uh, whoever has to go, thank you very much for, for watching. Uh, it's, uh, it, it, it was a pleasure. And uh, now I'm going to go into the, the, the questions. I'm just going to go get them on my email. All right, so we have a question from Felicia Mandarino. Hi, Felicia. Uh, I have a question. What is the best flour to use for authentic, authentic pizza dough? Oh, <laughs> coming fighting right out of the gates. Uh, so that, that is a big, uh, that, that's a big pizza question, actually. Uh, what I use, uh, what I suggest people is use what is, what is local. Uh, so I know a lot of people say you want to make an authentic Neapolitan style pizza dough. You need double zero. I am the believer that you don't. Uh, in all the restaurants that I've run, uh, I, you know, Pizzeria Gemma, Pizzeria Vesta, we're using 100% Canadian flour. 
Why? It's because we live in Canada. So what happens with double zero flour, it, it's a lot of an, it's an older flour because what happens most of the time is they buy grain from here, goes to Italy, gets processed, and then gets sold back to Canada at five times the price, usually. Uh, the Canadian grain is so good and so powerful. So for, let's say, a Neapolitan style pizza dough, I'll use a really good all-purpose flour from Canada. And for, let's say, a New York style, more Vesta style, let's say, uh, we'll use uh, a high gluten bread flour. So you talk to an Italian from Italy, he'll tell you it has to be double zero or else it's not pizza. My answer is use the best quality that you can. That, that is, our, that is our, 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 the way we think, our mentality in all of our restaurants. It's use the best and don't cut corners. Uh, the best here is Canadian grain. So let's use Canadian grain. All right, so next question from Anna Schiani. Hello, Anna. Uh, can, uh, can you mention the blender was also a juicer? How does that work? Aha, I had a feeling I would get this question, uh, not as if it was uh, <laughs> purposely asked, but the juicer, the blender is a juicer. Let, just give me a second, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wash this up and we're gonna make a juice. Since whoever's still in the, in the stream has some time to spare, let's make a nice juice and I'll have a, a later night snack, liquid-wise, let's say. <laughs> So this comes with, I'm going to have to try to do it backwards, but this comes with this attachment and this attachment, right? But it also comes with the juicer attachment. And I believe the blue, why it's called a blucer is because obviously it's a juicer and a blender at the same time. But they are actually connected together. Hold on, it unhooked. Breville managed to make uh, a, a blender and a juicer all together. Why just, you know, for a lot of people that juice, a lot of people that make smoothies. And the beautiful part about it is you see this spout right here. Well, you open this and it goes straight into your blender. So now let's make a juice. I'm going to get a bit of ice. My wife is going to kill me if you guys are able to see what's in my freezer. <laughs> so, a bit of ice. And like I said, this was not planned, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm just taking whatever is in my fridge. So, into the top. Let's make sure this does not come apart. So we're going to juice and smoothie at the same time. So I got some lemon. I got some cucumber and I got some clementines. This is literally just all leftover fruit that's in the fridge, getting overripe a bit. What do we do? We make a juice with it. Or we try to make a juice with it. it is. It's weird to use this backwards. So now we're going to turn this on uh, and we just do... Hold on, I'm going to have to turn it around. There we go. Safety first, ladies and gentlemen. So there we go. We'll add that to the blooper list. That's how you use the blue sir. <laughs> So there we go, we have our juice made on our ice. I'm sure the chat is dying of laughter because I know there's a lot of people I know that are in this, this chat right now. There we go.
Brian, are we still on? I think I lost connection. All right, so we got our juice in here. We're going to add the rest of our fruits. And then, safety first, the lid is on. We don't, want the, we don't want to paint the ceiling. My wife doesn't want the ceiling painted. And then, our smoothie is made. But wait, there's more. We're going to chef it up. We'll make it the chef special. Sure everyone can guess what I just put in there. And what's really cool about this is that only you can open only the spout if you wanted to. Let's get a glass. And there we go. We got a juice and a smoothie. All right, so moving on. Oh, that's delicious, actually. Just give a little wipe down. All right, so next question. David. Uh, hi, David. I will not pronounce your last name because uh, I do not want to butcher it. How long can pizza dough stay in the fridge? So if you follow the recipe, the Breville recipe that we have, uh, that can go that can be used anywhere between 48 hours and I think I've gone to like five days uh, given let's say our Vesta dough at, at the restaurant our maximum that will allow it to go is five days after that the quality starts starts to drop uh, but use it anywhere between two and five days after five days the rule of thumb that we use is if you open your container and it intensely it's gonna smell a bit like alcohol because fermentation always smells like alcohol because yeast is eating sugar and producing alcohol whether it's in pizza dough beer wine uh, but if it smells uh, extremely acidic uh, and it, a lot like we call it like the bottom of a beer barrel then you're probably you're about to lose your dough but it's not going to harm you if you unless it's molding do not eat it if it's molding but i would say no no more than five days just because you won't have the rising power your yeast is going to be dead or really tired and won't have any power or structure left on it so next question uh terry williams hello terry uh, can i use the pizza yolo to bake bread so you can use the pizza yolo to bake bread you can use the pizza yolo to make anything you want as long as it fits in the pizza yolo would i suggest to buy the pizza yolo to make bread no i would not i made this with the breville smart of an air that is way better for using for bread uh, i am able to fit this crazy which, and this will make you a big loaf of bread in that oven. So the pizza yolo, I would say use it more for, get it, you get it for pizza, obviously. Uh, I've cooked steak in there. I've probably cooked one of the best steaks of my life in there. Uh, vegetables, a lot of people think it's just for pizza, but it's not. You can, as long as you can fit it in the, the hole of the oven or in that pan, you're able to do it. You know, like half a chicken pounded down, uh, you add and it's really a good oven for making like a one-stop shop like a one pan uh, meal where you start by roasting your chicken you know like you have a chicken pounded down season 
When it's almost done, you add your potatoes in there, your onions, whatever other vegetables you want. It's a really efficient oven. The only problem is why it's so efficient is because it's not very big inside. That's what keeps that intense pizza heat, as we call it. Uh, next, next question. Jean McJanet. Hello, Jean. Uh, tomato sauce. You mentioned canned whole tomatoes. Can I use fresh tomatoes? So, yes, of course, you can use fresh tomatoes, but you have to know which tomatoes to use. Uh, for pizza, I always suggest if you have passada already made, use that or use whole canned tomatoes or passada in a can. The reason why I, I suggest to do that is that if you buy fresh tomatoes, you will have to blanch them to get the, the skins off and then you blend it. But if you're willing to do that, get yourself a good quality San Marzano, a plum tomato, a pear tomato. You just got to make sure it's a, it's a meaty tomato as we call it. So it has a good amount of pulp, but a good amount of uh, a good amount of meat tomato on it because if you use like a regular round red tomato it's not going to give you the same the same product that you're looking for and the redness won't be as red as you want because we all know when you take a regular red tomato from the grocery store those perfect blue uh, those, those perfect round tomatoes uh, all they all they do is turn pink when you blend them up but i would suggest a san marzano a plum or a, or a pear tomato, but I always go towards canned just because I run a restaurant, we make so much tomato sauce, we would never be able to make it from fresh tomato. Uh, I believe we have one more question. Uh, okay, well, the email says one more question, but it's not really a question. Uh, we've been getting a lot of questions about our recipes, so please, in the chat, there is a link uh, to sign up, to receive the email, to get all the recipes that we did today in detail, step by step, uh, they're foolproof, and if after that you have further questions, you can always contact a Breville rep, a HBC rep, and they will uh, pass along the questions, and I'll, I'll give them a, a, an answer for it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it has been an extreme pleasure to uh, do this show for you guys, to work with Hudson's Bay and Breville. Uh, it, it's been an extreme pleasure to bring you into my home. I know it may look in a bit of a disarray now, but that's cooking. That's what happens when you have fun in the kitchen. Thank you very much, everyone. Please stay safe and uh, just get creative in that kitchen. Have a good time and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you, everyone.